There's basically been three separate eras of retail. The first era of retail started like in the 1900s or so. You're talking the Sears Roebuck catalog. Hey, uh, I want them their overalls, Ma. Can you Pony Express them to me? Type stuff, right? That was early, late 1800s, early 1900s, up through the 60s or 70s or so. And it was all based around the asset, the commodity, the widget. So you're sticking with me. I got a 300 horsepower motor and a 320 horsepower motor. Which one of those is worth more? Twenty. Yeah, why? Power. It's bigger, right? Bigger, stronger, better. Well, okay, that's how we can quantify value is it's bigger, it's stronger, it's better. But a lot of things started to happen. One, industrialization started to make everybody compete on the bigger, faster, stronger level. You with me? So everybody was able to make a 320. And then you started to have high-end capping. Well, a 330 horsepower motor versus a 345 horsepower motor, not that much difference enough for me to put a substantial amount of money more towards you. So by the very nature of purchasing, we subconsciously as a culture progressed into a second era of retail called the customer service era. So not only will I sell you a motor, if it ever breaks, the reason you want to do business with me is because why? I'll take care of you. You come back, we'll take care of you. It's not based on the size, the strength, the power, but on the follow through of me being tied to you if anything ever happens. That was from the 70s, maybe late 90s, early 2000s, somewhere in that range. These aren't hard and fast numbers, but you'll see this concept of where we have progressed as a culture into the third era of retail where we sit today. The first one was the size of the asset or the commodity. The second was customer service. This third era of retail is called customer experience management. Customer experience management, which is kind of a crazy thought process. Stick with me on this, though, okay? So a little concept. You guys ever drink coffee? Y'all? Yeah? No? It's probably good that you don't. I'm sure there's some sort of virtue in there. But let's just say you did. Stick with me. We have coffee outside, right? So I got a nice warm cup of coffee, and if I look at that cup of coffee, my little styrofoam cup, I've got a basic couple of ingredients. I've got water, I've got coffee grounds, and I've got you know styrofoam or, or cardboard. How much cost to us or to anybody is wrapped up in that cup of coffee? Not much, right? We're talking cents, you know, 25 cents that maybe. Costs more than Coffee. So you add the coffee grounds, add the water, add the cardboard, 25 cents. How much could I sell you that cup of coffee out there for? A couple of bucks. Well, let's just be honest. That coffee that I serve you here, hey, we just made this fresh. You wouldn't buy it from me, probably. I'd probably give it to you for free. Maybe 25 cents if we had to drop a, drop a quarter type thing. Yeah. Am I being straight up here, right? It's not really worth much. Progress over. Let's just say that it's not in this setting, but in a completely different setting. You order a cup of coffee, cardboard, coffee, water. Same basic components of cost, right? Not much cost difference. But let's say if I turn the cup around, there's a little green logo on the side with Starbucks written underneath it. What's the price difference? in that cup of coffee versus this cup of coffee. This is about five bucks. Four, in 2013, four and a half dollars basically was how much that cup of coffee cost to the customer. It's probably closer to five now. Let me ask you this. Some guys will sit here and say, well, I wouldn't pay that much for a cup of coffee. You know what? You don't have to, because plenty of other people will, right? So interestingly enough, is that coffee five bucks better than this coffee? The true answer is yes. Why do I know that that's the true answer? Paying for it. That's what people are paying for it. You with me? Yeah, you're paying for the experience. I mean, you're going into Starbucks, they have, I mean, it's... So you're leading directly into this third era of retail, the customer, you just said the word, experience management, which is where that value comes in. They know my name. They write my name. It's cold outside. It's warm in here. They've got nice cushions. They've got vanilla in the air. There's a tradition that I have of coming here and this being my third place. 
not home, not work, my third place. Everything that we do in life nowadays is about the customer experience management. Not the sum of the parts. S, not S-O-M-E, but S-U-M. Not the addition of all the little parts. Because if they just added up coffee and uh, a little bit of water and some cardboard, my total cost is 25 cents, and so we'll, we'll put it at 47 cents as a price. That's the way that we falsely, historically think as contractors, right? In fact, if I ask, 99.9% .9 of contractors live back in era one when it comes to selling things. This is Jones. We deal with train exclusively. That XL15i, it's going to take care of you a lot better than that Linux will, or whatever, right? I don't care about the name. My issue is I'm dealing with the strength, the speed, the power of the commodity, and this customer is dealing in the customer experience management. And the fact is we try to pin all of our value on the asset or the commodity and not the experience, and that breaks their value to actually pay us what we think we're worth.